my work, I'm interested in trying to engage um, what I call the reader-viewer um, in a conversation about historical and contemporary racism in the United States, uh, using printmaking techniques in the book form, so artist books. Um, I try and kind of seduce um, the reader through materials, color, tactility, pacing, um, to kind of slow their initial impulse to sort of um, avoid or flee a conversation about race. In the fall 2013, um, when I first arrived in Rhode Island, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, I started walking the same street, Benefit Street, that cuts through um, RISD campus um, and also uh, Brown campus. And every day I was walking that street, collecting leaves. Um, I was, in, and during that time, researching about Rhode Island's um, involvement in the slave trade. Um, so as I was collecting leaves, I was thinking about how these beautiful, colorful displays that I was observing, um, similar displays would have been viewed by um, the slaves that lived and worked on that street hundreds of years ago. So sort of find, trying to find a tie. Um, so I started using those uh, leaves that I had collected, arranging them, screen printing them, uh, layer upon layer um, on either side. You can see um, there are actually about seven um, screen printed layers of the leaves, and that gave me a surface um, buildup that allowed me to have space to um, go back in with wax and with paint to sort of um, create more uh, atmospheric backgrounds. But um, I wasn't really sure at that point what I wanted to do with that. Um, I started actually moving um, away to that, but still, again, using um, the leaves. So here, um, just a, a few spreads um, from an artist book uh, called Harvest, uh, Holding and Trading, again, using the leaves. Um, so part of my experience was having the opportunity to really um, sift through Brown University's archives um, of 18th and 19th century account books, uh, receipts of slaving ships, um, of the different related business enterprises of the Brown family, um, handling and deciphering these documents as I was searching for names and clues and any kind of information about um, African slaves that were sold, traded, um, brought to the United States. Um, so part of what I wanted, I found myself wanting to express was my own uh, research experience of you know, having people sort of come forward in the record, having information about slaves come forward in the record on sometimes the fragilest, smallest slip of paper. Um, and also part of um, my experience was, um, you know, printing, um, printing the covers, um, cover paper, letterpress printing them, and having them sort of blend with my own skin color. So here are some examples of some of the um, account books. Um, and really part of my experience was um, trying to kind of decipher and sort of locate whatever information I could. So this is an example of uh, one of the receipts from one of the um, slaving ships in 1758. And then trying to find a way to sort of move that information forward within, in, within the project. So um, again, screen printed leaves um, that I had been collecting. Um, part of what I was really interested in doing um, was having the information to some extent hidden, sort of forcing the reader to sort of move closer to the page. From there, I sort of was trying to kind of integrate my earlier painted screen prints um, with the imagery and text from the book, but um, no longer really kind of limiting myself to um, the brown inks that were really talking about um, the different skin tones of slaves, but kind of freeing myself up with, with the colors of um, the autumn leaves. So um, this is a pattern um, actually on fabric, so starting to consider um, the fabric as a, possibly as a worn book. So this started me thinking about an, actually a new relationship, so no longer just the reader, uh, viewer, and the book, but actually a relationship between um, the reader as a viewer and then the reader as a wearer. So what does that mean? What kind of interaction would the viewer and the wearer have? Um, what would their interaction be? So at some point, the scarf sort of gave me a chance to um, move from index cards of trying to catalog information, so names of slaves working, on, um, on working and living on Benefit Street, um, their last names becoming the last name of their owner, 
<clears throat> when they were freed, um, sort of factoids about them. Um, but in a way, they sort of became these alternate historic house signs that acknowledge an individual population or an invisible population. So from there, I started an application sketch print uh, for a headscarf. And that was really talking about the accumulation of wealth um, through slavery, also the black body as gold, but then also kind of treated as being worthless, which seemed to come across throughout time. So what does that mean for the person wearing the scarf? Knowing that the text on it is coming from a 18th century slave receipt, does that affect how that person carries themselves? Does it matter that some of that information is sort of obliterated and actually to find out what it's saying, you would actually have to speak to the person wearing it. And then last summer, the deaths of Eric Garner, uh, Long Island, uh, in a chokehold by the police, and Mike Brown, and on and on and on, um, made me really want to find a way to express my outrage and sadness, um, kind of disgust for more contemporary suffering. So I found myself writing a set, series of poems uh, for different people and incidents that sort of resonated with me, um, very much thinking how very easily, instead of them, it could be someone you know, related to me or myself, and then reinterpreting those poems as concrete poems, so, so text as image on handmade paper, And this sort of gave me kind of a cast of characters to kind of continue working with. Um, so also looking for an alternate method of memorializing these people. Uh, my inspiration coming from maritime flags. Uh, so yellows and reds from the flags replaced with browns. Um, each letter of the maritime alphabet representing a person murdered, kidnapped, assaulted. Um, such as the black flag for uh, Relisha Rood, a nine-year-old uh, who was actually kidnapped from a homeless shelter in D.C. last year and remains missing. So very much um, this project for me represents almost a, metamorphic, uh, a metaphorical return to the waters of Middle Passage and the Atlantic slave trade where so many Africans' ancestors were tortured, humiliated, lost. A sort of community fa family album. And I found myself thinking about how the humiliation and confusion felt by a newly enslaved person in the 17th, 18th centuries might not be so different from that felt by a similarly hued person in the 21st century. Thank you. <laughs> 